Good morning, everybody who's here attending worship with us this morning. And of course, to all of you uh, who will be attending worship online, either today or through the week, uh, via YouTube or via prayer. How wonderful that there are so many ways to come together to praise God. Today, we are pleased to have an intergenerational service to celebrate the children and the teachers in our church school. So thank you to all of you who are participating. We also wanted to congratulate uh, the Sunday school children on the monies that they have raised for the opening classroom doors project. And next week, um, they will find out a little bit more about uh, where those monies are going. So um, as they wrap up their church year, doing it with a, a view to how they're helping other people in the world. For our youth today, there is the first Sunday lunch, and that will be happening right after service. So uh, I imagine that you all are meeting at the south door and heading out from there. You will see that uh, one of the, uh, the hymns in our bulletin today is, This is My Father's World which is fitting as we reflect on the many centuries our indigenous brothers and sisters have recognized and cared for the creator's land and those who live on it. We are grateful to build relationships with the peoples of the Susina and Stony Nakoda nations, the Blackfoot Confederacy, and the Métis Region Three, which is the outcome of true reconciliation. We wanted to thank everybody who attended the lunch and the AGM last Sunday. It was a wonderful turnout and great to hear about the impact of our work in the community um, via the Connaught School and also the ELL program here at Grace and to have participants actually describe um, how meaningful those opportunities have been to them. For those of you who were unable to attend or can't quite remember, some of us find that difficult sometimes. Um, the AGM materials are still on the website uh, if you had any questions or wanted to review anything. But there's also lots to look forward to as well. Many opportunities to volunteer and participate in programs at Grace that doesn't stop in the summer. So the Grace Bethany meeting will be happening June 13th. At the end of the month, there's the leadership retreat, so I would remind all the elders and committee conveners and the deacons to please register for that event right away. We wanted to say thank you this morning to Reverend Sabino, who's, I can't see him, but he's someplace. Um, he's going to be helping Reverend Jake um, on this Communion Sunday. There's a little note in the bulletin about communion and how it will work. You might want to uh, just have a look at that. And of course, Reverend Sabina will be preaching next week when we will be taking time to pray and welcome our pro tem ministers, Reverend Wendy Adam and Reverend Jeffrey Simmons in person although people with good eyes might see one of them is here today. We will also have um, a new interim moderator to announce, and there will be more details regarding that person and their role. Most of you won't be seeing much of an interim moderator, but that will be announced in the bulletin next week. My final announcement is um, we are in June, and that means summer hours have started in the office. So please take note, it's in the bulletin. And I'd like to invite Lorna to come up. I believe she has an announcement for us as well. Thank you, Mary Lil. As convener of the Spiritual Growth Committee, I am so happy to be here today to thank Kate Van Pernis on behalf of the youth and the children and the teachers and the teacher helpers and of course you, the congregation. For the past 10 months, Kate has led our children and youth program downstairs. Kate has shared her creativity, her enthusiasm and her love for God as she led the children in their faith formation. 
I promised that I wouldn't embarrass Kate and I wouldn't go on and on about all of the gifts that she has shared. But Kate has accomplished a myriad of things in our downstairs with our youth. Kate, please know that the gift of you to our youth has been so meaningful and you have impacted their lives in ways you will never imagine. Thank you. And I think you'll hear more accolades from the youth as you have lunch with them today for your monthly youth luncheon together. And I know they value that time with you. As you nurtured our youth, we have a plant for your beautiful garden to nurture because we know you're a gardener. And I also think and I hope that the newest member of the Van Pernis family, who isn't here yet, will share your love of nature and of God's creation. So we have a little set of junior garden tools. <laughs> We're going to entrust those to you until the time that you and Junior Van Pernis are playing together in the garden. Thank you again so much, Kate. You are a blessing. Thank you. Well, let us now take time to prepare our hearts for worship. The choir will sing the introit, and I invite Alouette up to light the Christ candle. I invite you to stand and join me for the call to worship, responding using the bolded words printed in the bulletin. God is the giver of all good gifts. God gives life. God gives love. God has caused the rhythm to flow through life so we are not overwhelmed by thoughts about the future or by longing for the past. We want to know God's rhythm and to share it in our stories of faith, in our words, guidance, and encouragement, and in our plans and hopes. We open our lives to God who is promise, grace, and love. We bring our praise to God who is continuing to shape and transform us. God is the giver of all good gifts. Friends, I'll invite you to remain uh, standing as you're able and join me in singing uh, hymn number 290, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. And let's sing together, lifting our voices of praise.
Please be seated. Our worship continues in opening our lives and hearts to God through prayer, sharing words of praise and words sharing confession. It's at this time that we can just pause and reflect on God's goodness and God's grace. So I invite you to take a deep breath with me Think of the many things that you are thankful for uh, this day, the things that you have been thankful for this week, the hopes you hold, the places where you are asking God to come into your life. And let's just uh, breathe and and pause and enjoy that pause, that time with God uh, now. God, we thank you that uh, together the opening door, opening classroom doors uh, gift will be two thousand two hundred and eighty-three dollars and forty-one cents. We're grateful that this will go to help children attend school and get a much valued education. We thank you for sunshine, for cool breezes, for plants that are greening and growing all around us, for the way the earth is alive. We recognize that you moved from the depths of love when you spoke creation from the darkness and into light. You surrounded us with your creativity. We give you thanks that wind and breath remind us of spirit among us and how the spirit moves and guides us along in faith, inspiring us to share your love with others. We give you thanks that you are our redeemer who brings wholeness And we're grateful for the wholeness that we have, for the wholeness that we seek. And we want to follow your ways and to love one another as you love us. We're grateful that you are a mystery to us, three in one. We call you by many names because you are so much more than we make you out to be. Your creativity causes grace to flow around us. You allow nothing to stop your love for us and invite us into a lifelong relationship. Continue to guide us and transform us as we join our voices together to share how we have lived in the ways you have shared and called us to and how we have also neglected these ways and... uh, and not shared um, what you have called us to. So let's pray together our prayer of confession. Grace-filled God, you know the details of our lives. You are aware of the ways we have misrepresented your love and rejected your call. You know the problems we face, the grief and worry we carry, the strain in our relationships with one another and creation, and you understand how disjointed life can be. We confess we often do not live into the openness you invite us into. Help us to trust your love, and in trusting your love, become healers and reconcilers, peacemakers and sharers of your promise. Move among us now. Amen. Friends, hear this good news. Paul wrote, through the love of Jesus, no one and nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God, and we are no longer to regard anyone from a human point of view. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. 
Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. Thanks be to God that we are invited into the forgiveness, love, openness, and peace God gives to us. So let's share that peace with one another. And I know we don't often do this, maybe because it feels like a disruption, but I'll invite you to get up, share the peace with one another through a handshake, a hug. So after we say, and also with you, you can get up and and share the peace for, for just a few moments with one another. So friends, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let's share that peace with one another. As we uh, come back together, I'll invite you to uh, lift your spirits with me as we sing hymn number 292, Father, I Adore You. And we'll sing all the verses of this. It's, it's a, a, a bit of a, of a repeat, and uh, we, we invite you to uh, stand as you're able, rise in body or spirit, and let's sing together. Number 292, Father, I Adore You. going to divide the sanctuary into three sections, okay? And we're going to sing that in a round. Okay, so uh, this section, kind of to this aisle right here, you guys are going to be Father, I adore you. Middle section, okay? Uh, Jesus, I adore you. And uh, this section over here, Spirit, I adore you. So uh, when it gets to uh, lay my life before you. I think that's, Matt, is that correct when people would jump in with their part? Okay, so when you hear section number one, get to lay my life before you, section number two goes, and then lay my life before you from section number two, section three goes, okay? All right, let's try have, it. You might have to conduct. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do, okay? I'm not professionally trained in conducting.
in progress. <laughs> All right. I'll invite a book up to lead us in our prayer for illumination. God, you've spoken good news of promise and hope through your word. Jesus and the Spirit continues to speak to us through your story made known to us in scripture and stories of faith. God has deeper understandings of the ways you are calling us to share your love. Amen. The responsive reading for today is Psalm 8 in the Red Psalter book. We will be singing refrain three. God. How is your name in all the earth. Your splendor is chanted above the heavens by the mouths of babes and infants. You have set up a defense against your foes to steal the enemy and the Look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. What are human beings that you are mindful of? Mortals that you care about? Yet you have made them a little lower than the angels. And crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Thanks, Alexis, for leading us in that reading. And I'm going to invite anybody who, big or small, who's feeling young or young at heart today to, to come forward. It's a conversation with all Christians today, so uh, you can come forward if you want and uh, know that. But we'll, I'll invite you to come forward as we uh, look at our gospel passage and the words we read from the gospel according to Matthew may be words that you have heard before. And some of you may even be familiar with these words. At the end of the gospel account, or the, the good news, uh, uh, the risen Jesus shares a commission. And what do you think that word commission means? Anybody? A mission. Okay, Len says a mission. Anybody else? Instruction. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's, uh, it's Jesus shares a task and gives authority to carry out that task with his followers. And this portion of scripture we are about to read shares the commission Jesus gives to his followers, and it's often called the Great Commission. So together, let's be open to the instructions that Jesus gives, whether this is our first time hearing these words or if we know these words well. As we enter into the story told by uh, the Gospel according to Matthew in verses 16 through 20 
in chapter 28. So if you want to turn to that, you can. Here's how it reads. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw Jesus, they worshipped him. But they doubted. And Jesus came and said to the disciples, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So friends, the parts of Scripture we have shared and worshiped today are words of hope for God's people, and so we give thanks to God for them collectively by saying, thanks be to God. So let's seek to draw closer to God's heart as we learn together today, and let's begin with prayer. Faithful God, you are the creator of heaven and earth, the stars and the universe, and you hold all things with care and wisdom. Stir us to learn more about your ways and how you invite us into following you with our lives. Lead us to understandings where the tangle of doubt and adoration cause our faith to become rich with meaning. May your spirit cause these words and the thoughts they stir up to help the seeds of your incredible love grow in our lives. Amen. Okay, a question for all of you. Why do you think the instructions the risen Jesus gave his disciples at the end of the gospel according to Matthew is called the Great Commission? So take a few moments to share some thoughts with your neighbors. Go. Okay, I'll draw us back together. Did anyone share what's great about the Great Commission? To all nations, always with you. Anything else? Purpose of the church, okay. Okay, so we can share Jesus with others. When we, Karen, it was something about living in community? Oh, when, when he gives us the opportunity. Okay. Well, I've got some news for you. Jesus never called his final instructions to his followers great. This descriptor, great, was given to these words at some later point. Maybe these instructions are great because these instructions are given by Jesus, risen and alive. Maybe these instructions are great because they are the final instructions that Jesus gives in the gospel, according to Matthew, and in the way in which they're given. It's, this is only shared in Matthew's gospel account. It's not shared in any of the other gospel accounts. Or maybe these instructions are called great because people have found these instructions to be both daunting, which means maybe a little bit, uh, they, they strike a little bit of fear in us, and demanding because they ask us to go and they ask us to teach and they ask us to remember. What do you think? Does that make it great? 
Let's start by exploring the word go. When you hear the word go, what do you think of? Action. Anybody think of a green light? Okay. Throughout Matthew's gospel, Jesus instructs his followers to go. Go and mend divides and be in meaningful relationships with people, with family members, neighbors, people who are different than you, people who are rejected, people who know life's brokenness and life's hurt, and the nobodies and no ones of today. Go the second mile, meaning keep walking to help bridge divides and build meaningful relationships. Go to quiet places and pray. And go sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor. Jesus is always telling his followers to go in the Gospel of Matthew. The instruction Jesus gives to go is a big instruction. Jesus' instruction leads us away from what is familiar and away from what is comfortable to care for the sick, to feed the hungry, and to embrace those in society who aren't valued. So go may not be as easy as it sounds may not be as easy as the green light coming on and then stepping on the, the gas pedal to go. One of my classmates in seminary learned a different language as a part of his education because he wanted to share God's good news in a different part of the world. Where might the instruction go be leading you? Jesus' instructions can lead people to every corner of the earth places that are different, and even places right around us. So often we think we may have to go someplace really, really far away. But what about the places right around us? Uh, the, the different places in Calgary or in Canada. Okay, I live in the northwest. Crossing the river into the south takes me, you know, got to be a pretty good reason to get across the river into the south, right? Got folks here from the northeast, right? Yeah. Got folks here from the southwest. Where do, where do we have to, how do, how do we come together? Maybe it's about having a conversation with an indigenous person. Or, or maybe it's uh, about having coffee with the neighborhood grump. Hmm? Or maybe it's sharing a meal with uh, your new neighbor who's from Pakistan. That idea of going. In all these places, halfway around the world or just down the block, Jesus invites us to share God's good news story, teaching about God's love and grace with both words and actions. You know, there's that quote that's attributed to Francis of Assisi. He was, he, he, sometimes people call him Saint Francis. And it says, share the gospel, use words if you need to. Jesus instructs his disciples to teach. Jesus tells his disciples to teach the nations what he commanded. The Jesus we know from the gospel accounts uh, shares words and actions that call followers to work for reconciliation, to love those rejected by society, to pray, to let go of pride, to take on the role of a servant, and to love God and neighbor. This type of teaching takes patience and time because it is built on the idea of being present and together in community. 
Sometimes we think, you know, that, that idea of teaching means we only got to do it once, right? And people will totally understand. But we have to do this repeatedly. We have to be in community. We have to live together. Minister and writer Barbara Brown Taylor, in thinking about the commission Jesus gives his disciples at the end of Matthew's gospel, references a cartoon showing a man sitting on a bench wearing a t-shirt that has in all capital letters on it, ask me about my religion. What do you think people's reaction would be if you wore that t-shirt? The caption under the cartoon said, this is another way to keep an empty seat beside you. (laughs) We don't talk about religion much, do we? Maybe the exception is on Sunday mornings here at church. One of the joys of being a church together is we have church school teachers and elders and deacons and ministers and friends in this place who help us have a greater understanding and working knowledge of God's story. Think about uh, some of the folks uh, who have shared stories about Jesus and God with you. Who comes to mind? Hmm. Maybe if you turn in your bulletin, there's a, there's a thank you today. Today we celebrate the Kids and Youth Program at Grace, and we give thanks for the wonderful leaders who have made it happen over the last school year. Joanne, Ryan, Richard, Sejong, Ken, Chandra, Anne, Chisholm, Ava, Elise, Ewan, Irene, Chloe, Jen, Maya, Cindy, Flora, and Kate. There are some people. Who else do you think about who's shared the stories of Jesus and God with you? We can be thankful for these people and how they're sharing God's story. We can be thankful for Reverend Marin and Reverend Christian who helped to share God's story here and are now sharing God's story in a different part of Calgary at Westminster Presbyterian Church. We can be thankful for many who have, have shared. We can be thankful for Kate who helped share God's story earlier in this church school year, and now Anne, who is helping to share that story, and Heather, who's going to help share that story this summer. Isn't that wonderful? We have all these people who are helping to share the story. There are many more people who have helped to share God's story with us, and I'm wondering if together we can say thank you to God for how they are helping us to learn about God's story by together placing both our hands uh, over our hearts and saying, thank you, God, for everyone here and how they help us learn about you. So uh, I'll try and demonstrate here. So we do this, and we can say, thank you, God, for everyone here and how they help us learn about you. Let's try that one more time. Thank you, God, for everyone here and how they help us learn about you. Hmm. So we have these great examples of folks who have helped to share the story. However, uh, there's, there's... The instructions that Jesus gave to go and teach haven't always been used well. Often teachers and ministers and missionaries and other people who said they were representing Jesus used horrible actions and methods in trying to convert people to believe in Jesus. At times, the commission Jesus gave his disciples has been understood as a tactic to make people Christian. An understanding that unfortunately still has some hold in Christianity today. 
And the, this, this final instruction that Jesus gives, it, it sometimes we think it points to conversion. The question we must ask ourselves is, what does it mean to make disciples? Grace's mission statement shares, inspired by the Holy Spirit, we make disciples of Jesus Christ to love our neighbors and affect social change. So what does it mean to make disciples? I think making disciples is living in community with one another and teaching through words and actions what Jesus commanded. Living together in community is really different from the it's all about me norms of society. It means we seek the common good, taking care of one another and creation. We work together to expand the circle of welcome and peace and make sure that needs are met. Not just our own needs, but everyone's needs around us. Teaching everything Jesus commanded means we put service before self. Living in community, life together is centered on what theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who wrote about, talked about, and thought about God, called costly grace. Bonhoeffer wrote, the commission Jesus gives to his disciples to go and to teach is costly because it causes us to follow one who is willing to lay down his life for many. And it's grace because it leads to true life, which I think means it leads us to knowing life's fullness. Following Jesus isn't about being safe or right. It's about being alive, alive to grace. And grace is present in pain, it's present in suffering, it's present in places that are hard. It's about being alive to these things, not being safe from them. Bonhoeffer shared, Jesus invites us to take up what Jesus carries, the call to go and to teach at the risk of losing what we think is comfort and control and what is familiar to find life in sharing Jesus' story. So everything I've shared so far may make us think about if we want to follow the instructions Jesus gave. Don't worry, we're in good company. Remember in the portion of the gospel story we read, the, dis the disciples doubt. And in some translations it writes, some of the disciples doubted. In others it says, all of the disciples doubted. Meaning, they aren't sure of what's going on. The biblical Greek word translated as doubt can also mean to hesitate. Hmm. We all have a tendency to hold back when it comes to following Jesus because Jesus often calls us to be something beyond our understanding. Jesus is calling us to be devoted to something that still makes our knees shake. Our doubt or our hesitancy doesn't mean we don't believe. It is a step or a part of discipleship, asking us to trust in God's goodness. In teaching people everything Jesus commanded, we need to speak openly about this, about doubt and hesitancy, and how this doesn't keep Jesus from giving us the instruction to go and to teach too. The disciples doubted, but Jesus still says, go, teach, remember. He doesn't give them a pass, just saying, well, you doubted, you're off the hook. No, he says, go, teach, remember. This instruction, it's for everyone 
The good news, according to Matthew, reminds us God in Jesus comes, blesses, and commissions the disciples, even though they had doubt or they were hesitant. Jesus' instructions to go and live in community and teach everything God commanded are matched by Jesus' instruction to remember. The question we have, the doubts we hold, the hesitancy we know, don't separate us from the love of God. Jesus says, remember, remember I am always with you. The instruction to go and teach cannot be separated from this remembering, remembering that Jesus is always with us. In the word remember, Jesus is asking his disciples and you and me to recall the commandment Jesus calls the greatest. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, followed closely by the command, love your neighbor as yourself. The commission is centered on helping the disciples love God and love neighbor. When the church is engaged in being sent and teaching everything Jesus commanded, we need to remember We need to remember getting together on Sundays is about remembering. It's it's remembering that provides rest and restoration to aid us in our going out and teaching. And our going out and teaching is an act of remembering God's goodness, the love of Christ, and the promise of Christ's presence we know through the Holy Spirit. The greatness found in these instructions is that the story is that the story of who receives them and when they receive them causes the risen Christ to remember them. And he, he comes, he comes, right? He comes to these people who had given up on him, betrayed him, denied him. He comes to the people just like us who sometimes don't understand him, who doubt who he is, with an invitation to join him in the work of bringing about God's kingdom. Jesus, in saying, remember, points to this commission being an invitation to join in the work of bringing about God's kingdom. Friends, we are invited to go into into the world, working to make the words of the prayer Jesus taught, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, real. Here's what theologian N.T. Wright wrote about that. If we pray that prayer, we shouldn't be surprised if we are called upon to help bring, bring, help bring about God's answer to it. So if we pray that, we shouldn't be surprised if God asks us to help bring that about. So again, why are these instructions the Great Commission? I'll finish up with this thought. This commission, these instructions are given to you and me, and we are given the authority to carry these instructions forward. We are called upon, even in our doubt or hesitation, to go, to teach, and to remember. This commission is great Because the risen Jesus invites you and me to be a part of the story God is still writing. There's a church that I served in Minnesota where we had a banner that said, God is not finished with us yet. God is still writing the story of how God is answering our prayers of your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And God's doing that with a love that is beyond our understanding. But we're invited to go, to teach, and to remember that that story is still out there. It's still alive. It still has life. So go. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father 
and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen. As we think about what has been shared, what we have thought, what we have sensed and felt, uh, let's join our, hand, our, our voices together in singing The Clay-Stained Hands of Love. It's number 296 in the Book of Praise. And I'll invite you to rise and body your spirit as we sing together. Friends, this is the Lord's table. It is a table of grace and forgiveness and love. It is meant for all who are gathered here, visitors and newcomers, members of the church, uh, adults, teens, children, those who have faith and those who have questions or hesitations. God welcomes us all to this table of wholeness where Jesus gathers people to share bread and juice, <clears throat> representing the gifts of God's grace given freely. So come, come all who are thirsty and all who are hungry for this table, the Lord's table, it is for you. Just let us pray. As we give thanks in this prayer, we, re we remember God's involvement in history, Jesus' life and ministry, and we pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. 
you created light shining up out, out of darkness, divided the sea and dry land, created the universe and call it good. You met us in your image to live with one another in love. You give us the breath of life and freedom to choose your ways. You set forth your purpose in the commandment given to Moses and the prophet Christ for justice. Through long generations, you have been patient and kind to all your children. How wonderful your ways, O oh, Almighty God! How marvelous is your name, O oh, Holy One! You alone are God. Therefore, we, the people of ages and time, who lived in your who live in your heart, we lift our hearts and in joyful praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, 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 God of power Lord, and might, heaven and earth are full of your, of your glory. glory. Hosanna Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna Blessed Hosanna in the, high, in the, the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. We praise you, Holy One, for sending your only Son, Jesus, to live among us, full of grace and truth. Sharing our joy and sorrow, Jesus healed the sick and was a friend of sinners. Obeying you, he took up the cross so we might live and live fully. We praise you that Jesus overcame death and is risen to rule the world as a healer of the sick and a friend of sinners. Yes. We trust Jesus to overcome every power that can hurt or divide us and believe that when Jesus comes in glory, we will celebrate the wholeness he brings. We thank you that on the night before Jesus died, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. In the same way, he took a cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of how you shared your love in Jesus, we take this bread and this cup and give you praise and thanksgiving as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and juice, that along, that along with everyone who comes to your table may be one with Christ and Christ one with us. Here we offer ourselves to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. In your mercy, accept our praise and thanksgiving. Fill us with the joy of eternal life, that we may be your faithful people now and forevermore. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, forever and ever. As we pray the words that Jesus taught, saying, Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our, our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So we'll invite those who are helping to serve communion to come forward to receive the elements to be shared from the table. 
And we invite you to go to the stations uh, to share in communion. There'll be stations placed throughout the main level of the sanctuary and up in the balcony. And uh, there will be people who will be ready to bring elements to you as well if you'd like to remain where you are. If this is the case, if you, could, if you could or if you could have someone who's sitting by you raise their hand, uh, the people will come and uh, bring the elements to you. If you picked up a communion packet today as you came in, um, we invite you to uh, uh, use those as, as we share in the elements together. And if you're uh, joining us online, we just invite you to share in communion with us. Uh, grab some bread, grab some juice or water, and, and uh, enjoy this uh, feast, which is for you as well. We'll share the elements at the station, so you don't have to bring them back um, with you. So please know that you can, you can eat them and, and drink right there, and there'll be trays that you can set things in. So, um, Friends, Let's share this table, the table of of Jesus who invites us to come just as we are, to remember the story of grace. And uh, it tells by inviting us to know the gifts of God for the people of God. So I'll invite those who are serving to come forward and we'll share the elements with you.
Love all compelling, this shared meal seats us at your table and reminds us of your grace. May we grow in the love you share through this meal so we may humbly reach out and serve our neighbors. We ask this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, our faith proclaims the outpouring of love from God, God's heart and, and from God's very nature, and that God's very nature is love. So may our gifts of time and talent and treasure that we give this week and in the days ahead uh, offer an outpouring of our love for God and our willingness to put that love into action for God's world. So we give of our time, our talents, and our resources now. Let us pray. Loving one, receive our gifts as signs of our love and commitment to live for you. Bless our gifts of time, talent, and treasure, as well as our lives, so they may accomplish more than we can ask or imagine. As we follow Jesus, equipped by the Spirit to serve you well and wisely. Amen. In singing, This Is My Father's World, number 328 in the Book of Praise. So let's sing together.
So friends, as our worship ends, our service begins. So go and teach and remember. Go from this place to share the good news of God's kingdom, teaching through words and actions, and remembering God's love for you and for all creation. And as you go to teach and remember, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God give you the grace never to sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to remember the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. May God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your hearts and set them on fire. May God lift up God's blessings upon you and give you peace. So go, teach, remember. You are a blessing. Someone is waiting to receive. And as you go, know that the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. They are yours. They go with you. They are yours to share freely. So go and be that blessing. Amen.